Um, I'm John Wheely, as you probably figured out, and I'm in the store, the, the uh, file system and storage uh, area at uh, at Red Hat, and I want to talk a little bit about the the index that's that the deduplication index that's used by the by uh, VDO. So, uh, and I'll see if I, whoops, oh dear, um, I so. Just a little difficulty with my uh, 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 oh dear. All right. Well, new platform. Um, I'll just I'll just read. Uh, we skip the slide. I'll do a quick review of. Uh, what VDO is, it's a device mapper target called DMVDO. It's um, like any device mapper target, it maps from a logical address, a block address space to uh, some physical storage underneath. And while it's doing that, it does some deduplication and compression. The compression part is out of scope for this uh, discussion. Um, <clears throat> how does it, how does it do that, it computes a, a hash signature for each block that's written. It looks it up in a an index called UDS, and um, based on the, that lookup, it um, gets a it's a hint about whether it can uh, can do deduplication on it. Um, so, what does a an index have to have in order to be useful for uh, VDO? It has to have a minimal overhead, both in time and space. Um, it, in particular, it needs to not be a bottleneck on the right path. The right path is complex enough as it is. So you also like to minimize the storage overhead. The reason for that, of course, is if, the, if, if finding and keeping track of the deduplication takes too much of your storage, you lose the benefit of the deduplication. It has to have a small memory footprint because, in general, the memory is better used for other things um, on a busy system. And as kind of a sub-goal, in order to meet those uh, the overhead goals, um, it should take advantage of some of the properties of actual, you know, real-world uh, data set, data um, workloads. And quickly, those properties, the interesting properties there are temporal locality, which um, means that a, if a block is found to be a duplicate, it's more likely to be a duplicate of something that was written recently than something that was written a long time ago. And then there is also often kind of spatial locality, uh, runs of duplicate blocks, uh, particularly in, in things like uh, backup workloads. The, today's full backup probably has a lot of runs of blocks that are duplicates of yesterday's full backup. So how do we minimize the time and keep it off the off of the as a keep it away from being a bottleneck on the right path? Well, it's very decoupled from VDO. It's so decoupled that it's a separate module. The module that does the management of the underlying storage and the mapping from the logical blocks to the underlying storage is the KVDO module. Then the module that manages the deduplication index is the UDS module. And the interface between the two is very is very slender. The it is asynchronous, and it's treated as advisory rather than definitive. So asynchronous means that that um, VDO computes that hash signature for a block of data. It thanks. Um, it computes the hash signature for a, a block of data, and it appends some metadata that it's going to use later. And it launches a request to the you know, UDS index, and it gets notified sometime later by a callback. And VDO treats this as advisory rather than definitive. So VDO has to go actually go and do some more work, um, even if it gets a, a positive answer that, that there was a match found. But what this means is that VDO can launch a request to the index and then go about its business doing whatever it, it uh, can usefully do. And when that callback provides the answer, VDO can act on that and 
do otherwise do the uh, deduplication, or it can just ignore it. If the system is heavily loaded, if the storage is, is uh, slow, uh, video can just blast on uh, without the, you know, without the uh, deduplication. And the, the, the only thing you lose there is a potential deduplication. It's, there's no correctness issue. It will always, um, it will never lose data. <clears throat> How do we minimize the memory in the storage? Well, the index is sized by its memory footprint. We decided that was the going to be the defining characteristic. And that's defined once at creation time, and you can't change it. Uh, and that memory footprint ranges from a quarter of a gigabyte to a terabyte. And the that determines the, the overall size of the index, the size on, on storage. And then that in, defines the deduplication window, which is uh, basically how far back you can look for duplicate blocks. So the storage, the total storage is 10 times the memory footprint. And that provides a deduplication window of about 10 terabytes per gigabyte of, of memory footprint. But so, and that also means that the on storage part, the whole index is also a fixed size. Uh, and and doesn't grow and that's useful for VDO because it can allocate a fixed amount of space to hold the index. So what do we need to how do we how do we need to manage this? Well the part that's in memory has to be a very efficient way to drill down into the the total index. And for terminology um, we call the whole index a volume. The volume is divided into chapters. The chapters have pages, and the pages contain records. And records are just pairs of hash signature and metadata. Um, so, so what is the what are the in-memory pieces? There is a a master index. There's an open chapter, and there's a page cache. The, <clears throat> the master index is used to find a chapter. Each chapter has its own index uh, that's used to find a page within the chapter, and then the page is searched for a match. Um, the open chapter is the chapter that's currently being added to, and in order to exploit the temporal locality, the duplicate being more likely a duplicate of a recent thing, the when a request is, is issued to the UDS index, first looks in the master index to find a likely chapter. If that chapter is the newest chapter, if that chapter is the open chapter, it looks there and if it's, if it, whether it finds it in a, we're, we're all set. If it finds it in the open chapter, we're all set. Calls, calls the call back with the um, with a positive answer. If it's not found, it adds it to the they adds to ah, it adds it to the open chapter with the metadata that was that was um, passed with the request. <clears throat> if it wasn't found in the open chapter, if the chapter that is if the chapter um, if all right. If it found a chapter, a, a possible chapter in the master index, it goes in and um, consults the chapter index for that chapter, and that will give it a page within the chapter to look for. If the page is in the page cache, again, the page cache is the most recently accessed pages, so again, exploiting that um, temporal locality. If it's in the page cache, it can look directly there, and if it's not in the page cache, it'll evict the oldest page, bring the page in, and search it. And in all cases, if the, if the um, hash signature is found in the, in the, in somewhere in the volume, it gets added, it gets moved to the open chapter with the metadata that was already associated with it, and that will, that will, uh, 
let uh, VDO know that it can look for deduplication there. If it wasn't found anywhere in the volume, that means it's a new, a new block of data, or at least a new signature, and we'll get added to the open chapter with the new metadata that was provided with the request. <clears throat> so how does, how does this work? How can we uh, get efficiently um, locate these things in the very, you know, in the small memory footprint by the magic of delta lists? Delta lists uh, take advantage of the statistical properties of random numbers. The, with, a good hash, with a good hash algorithm, the hashes of, of blocks are statistically random. They're independent from each other. And the particular statistical properties that, um, that are important here, uh, the different, if you take a sorted list of random numbers, the differences between successive entries in that sorted list are also have a uh, follow a probability distribution, <clears throat> excuse me, around the mean difference. So the, you, uh, the hashes in the delta index can be, can be represented by the dis differences between successive uh, hashes in the sorted list. Those differences, uh, uh, cluster around the mean, but of course they are of different, different uh, magnitudes and different binary orders of magnitude. So the so the uh, most compact way to represent those is with a variable length encoding uh, with a Huffman code, and this requires a good hash algorithm that has a good distribution, but not necessarily a cryptographic hash. It's just the hashes just have to be statistically random. And although murmur hash three is not a cryptographic hash, and it is theoretically possible to construct uh, blocks of data that would have specific hashes or patterns of hashes, um, it, a denial of service attack is not terribly practical because UDS does protect itself. It does a lot of, um, it does protect itself from, uh, perverse uh, uh, patterns of, of hashes. So in so to, to walk a request through this process, uh, it is it would be impractical to keep a, a, the master index as a sorted list of uh, all the hashes that have ever been seen. Uh, the, Hashes are 128 bits, so that would be a very long list. It'll be also we, because of the variable length encoding, the delta lists have to be sorted, or that is searched uh, with a linear search because you have to construct the difference from the the Huffman code. So, in fact, what the master index has is a um, an array of delta lists. <clears throat> so to look up a, a hash in the master index, UDS takes a subset of the bits of the hash, which again, with a good hash, those should be as random, as the su a subset of the bits of the hash should be as random as the hash, it's hashes, the total hash. So it uses a subset of the bits to first, a subset to locate a delta list within the master index. And then it uses some more bits from the hash to match against the entries in that delta list. And that delta list you can see is much smaller because it's used, it's, um, it only, it uh, uses a subset of the bits. So the, the, um, the data or the payload, the, the value associated with the, each, each um, fra partial hash in the, in the master index points to a chapter. It's a, it locates a chapter. So, the next step is to uh, look at the chapter index. Each chapter has a chapter index that works the same way. It is a list of delta lists. So searching the chapter, uh, the chapter uh, 
index also takes a, a different subset of the bits of the total hash and finds a delta list within the chapter index and then searches that delta list linearly and that gets uh, a page and then when the page is pulled into the into memory if it wasn't already there the pages are the records within the page are searched with a uh, with a quadratic sort uh, because they're you know they're in effect randomly distributed they're sorted but they're you know they may not be uniform across the across the space and there's one more way that we can exploit the uh, locality properties and that is the spatial locality actual da um, many uh, uh, data uh, workloads have runs of duplicate blocks um, for instance today's uh, today's full backup probably has a lot of runs of the same blocks that were in yesterday's uh, full backup so in that case we can get we can use uh, just a sample of the hashes in the master index because once a page containing um, one of those sample hashes is in memory um, all a lot of the adjacent hashes will also be there and that gets a 10 times larger volume for the same size uh, memory footprint um, and so <clears throat> um, so where can we go with this uh, UDS is uh, particularly suited to for deduplication because it's because it takes advantage of those properties so the important things are that it's advisory it's a fixed size which means that the oldest entries age out as entries are added and it's optimized to uh, find the most recently used uh, things first so it's particularly suited to uh, deduplication it's it is of course it's the index for uh, VDO. It is also it, it before it was open source. It was it also was used in a uh, storage array from a major uh, storage vendor to do their deduplication, and they do you know much the same thing as that uh, VDO does as far as managing the block mappings and uh, the deduplication. Um, <clears throat> so its behavior is something like a soft hash map so the key thing is that the a user of it would have to would have to actually manage the actual data use it only for advice and would have to do uh, garbage collection or um, otherwise manage the the data so it's not really a doesn't it's not really a general general purpose uh, hash table um, I kind of rushed through this because we started late. Are there, um, what can I go, are there places I can go back and elaborate more where the things that weren't clear? The, okay, the question was that, uh, a good hash algorithm is needed but not necessarily a cryptographic hash the benefit of a cryptographic hash is that you the um, you can in a better in a um, you, uh, you can treat the index as uh, more authoritative um, one of the another thing that it it was another thing that uh, UDS has been used for is a some a couple of us from uh, Permabit 
um, which actually, I guess, that's one of the things I rushed past, I guess. Um, the VDO was originally uh, created by a company called Permabit, um, ten or, starting like 10 or 12 years ago. And Permabit was acquired by Red Hat a few years ago, and the code's open sourced, and um, we're working on getting it into the kernel. Um, there is, or there is mm, kind of um, latent support for larger hashes and um, cryptographic ha a cryptographic hash at 100. The current hashes are 128 bits. A cryptographic hash at 128 bits probably doesn't buy much, but a cryptographic hash at uh, 256 bits. Um, Cryptographic hash, first of all, has the property that it's hard to reverse. It's hard, and it's hard to create. It's it's computationally infeasible to create uh, blocks of data that would have a specific hash, um, which would, which means that it it would actually make it probably more resistant to denial of service attacks. But also, uh, several of us at at Permabit um, a number of years ago wrote a prototype. Um, uh, uh, kind of a backup uh, capability uh, similar to rsync in that it generated uh, a cryptographic hash and used uh, UDS as to uh, deduplicate the backup traffic. Um, in, in a case like that, a cryptographic hash, a, a strong cryptographic hash means that a false positive, that is two blocks that hashed accidentally hashed to the same value is less likely than um, you know a cosmic ray zip zapping a bit on the storage and so you can be you can do much less all right back up one more step when video finds a match in the UDS index it still has to go and verify that the block of data um, matches the block of data that's being written the block of data that's all that was that's already on storage matches what's being written. With a cryptographic hash, you can uh, skip some of that uh, overhead because you can be reasonably sure that if the cryptographic hash um, matches the probability of uh, um, the of two blocks with the same cryptographic hash is um, is smaller than the error that would be created by various other things, such as you know a bit error on the on the storage, um, I was a little disjointed, but um, that's at least something about the value of the cryptographic hash. Anything else? I, I, I was thinking, one thing I was thinking of um, by way of something besides deduplication that might um, that might be able to use a UDS would be something, if you were doing some kind of, um, I was thinking maybe if you were doing some kind of real-time analytics where you were only uh, interested in the, you were most interested in the most recent uh, data that would still require that the the client, in, in all cases, the client has to has to be prepared to manage uh, garbage collection or, um, you know, otherwise manage the. If 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 UDS is being used to manage data, then it's the client has to do the actual data management, has to do garbage collection or somehow keep track of the data. So the so that, for instance, aging um, older entries out of the index doesn't um, doesn't leave dangling references. <clears throat> um, it looks like our time is pretty much up. Am I right?
Well, thank you, and I hope I hope this was at least moderately interesting or and or useful.